So before we went on break, mm -hmm. where we had a conversation and yes. we were talking about the entrepreneur aspect of makeup, mm -hmm. how people make money. And I'll share with you that I have a friend who learned on YouTube mm -hmm. and she's doing well now. Yeah. So do you necessarily need to go for a specific training? Because I know it can, it can be expensive. Yes. So do you need to um, go for a specific training to be a makeup artist? Mm -hmm. That is a very touchy question. Okay. In the sense that um, when I started makeup, I started teaching myself. I was in school then, university, and I wanted to go for a normal training, but I couldn't afford it because you're in school, you have expenses, your pocket money is for your living, mm -hmm. and then in our parents' view, you want to now waste money on something so frivolous like makeup. And um, I started watching YouTube videos. So your friend's um, scenario is something like mine. I started watching YouTube videos and um, I started learning. And fortunately for me, I had friends who would allow me to test around their face. Okay. So I would learn one thing. I would go and say, okay, bring your face. Let me try this. Bring your face. So the more I was watching and practicing, I was getting it. Better. But the honest truth is that to... Um, at one point or another, you still need some sort of formal training. YouTube can only get you so far. It would, um, YouTube would give show you, give you an idea. Teach you the basics. Because whether I would like it or not, a YouTube makeup tutorial is not two hours long. They're not going to say, oh, and this is the mascara. Put the mascara like this. They just say, oh, and then my mascara, and then the next cut. They've, Edited version. You understand? You've seen the mascara on. Oh, and then the lashes. You've already put the lashes on. So the two minutes in between, you don't know what's happening. You don't know if it's bonding glue, there is no lash glue. Mm. You understand? You don't know if it's even them that fixed it. Maybe somebody came in and fixed it. So you can't really just go on what you are saying on YouTube. Oh. But we have, the, the, the honest truth is that we have a lot of YouTube in practice now. There are a lot of people that watch a video. Oh, I'm supposed to buy mascara. And then they go to the market and then they buy mascara. I say, oh, I'm a makeup artist. Oh, I need to buy lipstick, go to market and buy it. But when you go for a formal training, you're investing, you're building a relationship. Chances are the person who trains you would be like a mentor-like figure. I won't say the word mentor because we throw that word around mm -hmm. a lot. But it's someone who you can go back to and say, oh, hi, Motoraya, I'm having this issue. And I'll say, oh, sure, come. If you've not paid me at one point, maybe our relationship is very deep for me to be answering you because I'm trying to do my own struggles. I'm trying to um, balance my own life and face my students. And then you from nowhere, you don't want to pay. You now want me to use all my time to teach you. You understand? So you have some sort of access when you pay for It's not just you're learning makeup. You're paying for access. You're paying for network. Chances are you will probably um, stay in the person's studio for a couple of months, like an internship and understand makeup in a business sense. Okay. So, and then we also teach um, the business of makeup. So apart from doing the skill, we teach you how to run your business. We teach you all those other things. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Tell so, us the business. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'm getting to that. Okay. I would say that personally, I feel like you, sh you need to do some sort of training. And you never stop learning. I still did another training for two weeks with one of the top makeup artists in Nigeria. Okay. Because I felt like, oh, I want access to her. Not necessarily that I didn't know what she was teaching, no, but I wanted access to her. I want to be able to call and say, auntie, something, something. Please, can I come? I'm having this problem. Because there's, there's a lot of things that experience will teach you mm. that is not taught in the classroom. Okay. There's a lot of things you learn on the way. So now I have access to her. I can chat up and say, ah, good afternoon. What are you doing today? Can I come to us and play with you? That come to us and play with you means Ah, I have one issue I need to solve or I want to pick your brain about something. So, um, and then you have, when you're in a classroom setting or a makeup room setting, you can ask unlimited, you can't ask anybody, you type your comments. Yes. Chances are the person will not even yes. respond. Yes. 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 So I would say that it's okay to learn online, right. but you cannot stop there. Okay. okay. You have to do a whole lot more. You have to put in the hours, you have to put in the work, the blood, the tears, the sweat. Right. And then you have to pay someone because the truth is that when you pay for something you value it you more. value it yes okay. so now let's talk about um still on the business side yeah 
I know that getting this makeup uh, kit is very expensive. Yeah. You know, so most people can't even afford it, so they have to wait. Is there a form of borrowing to use? I would say, sorry to go back, but that's yeah, where right. access comes in. Mm. Mm. If I went to learn with you, for example, and I'm your star student, and I say, oh, I've learned it now. I don't have money for kids. At your discretion, you can say, no, when we have a client, let me know. You can come to my house, swing by, and pick up things you need. Mm -hmm. Because they are like a big sister to me. You've seen my potential. You want to help me grow. But you can't just approach me and say, ah, excuse me, Motaria, I want to rent your makeup. I'll be like, why? I don't know you. You understand? So that's one aspect. That's one way to look at it. I personally don't know where they can borrow makeup because makeup is a very, very... Mm. Sensitive? sensitive sensitive things yes. yeah. we always tell makeup artists even the ones you want to start invest in a professional makeup brush set one issue is that when you start doing makeup you make back your money if yes. you learn properly and if you know what you're doing, doing not if you are a quack makeup artist you understand you will not be charging 1000 naira to do makeup and then you're not wondering why you cannot afford to buy the foundation that is 20,000 naira you have to do 20 faces for you to afford one makeup. Mm -hmm. Avoid those 20 faces, you've already finished one foundation. So mathematically, you can never work. But when you place va premium value on your work, because you know you've invested in yourself and in your, in your, in your training Business. and your brand, then it will be easier for you to afford all those things. If, you, if one wants to go into makeup now, as you want to start officially as a makeup artist, how much can you use to start? To get your makeup kit. Minus the training Perfect. or with the training? Minus uh, the training. Why? Let, no, okay, everything. probably probably you already learnt on f Facebook. I mean, mm. I say Facebook. <laughs> you've learnt on YouTube. <laughs> you've learnt on YouTube to an extent. Mm. And you've tried, you know, one face, two faces. And then you feel like you, you can start. You have yeah. a flair for it. How much can you use to buy your kit? Hmm. Um, a starter kit can cost anything between like 150 to 200. What? Mm -hmm. what? A comprehensive, <laughs> let me, let me follow people quote me, a comprehensive starter kit okay. that has everything you need, good quality products. You understand? I can, you see somebody that tell you, I have a makeup kit, 10,000 naira, come and buy. Chances are everything there, you will hate them. Mm. Or they will give you a cheap outlook. Or they will give you something like, that you, your clients will not call you. And once your clients don't call you a second time, you need to reflect and know, what did I do wrong? Was it me? Was it my attitude? Was it my products? Was it the last thing of the makeup? So all those things are things that you need to put into factor. Okay. So I tell people that, see, makeup, there's no rush. If you want to start, some, some places you learn, they give you free kits. Some places you learn, they give you free brushes. A brush set, a professional brush set can, be, can cost as much as 35000 40000 for brushes. But people don't understand that that is our... That's our pencil, that's our tool, those are our tools. That's, you can't do a makeup, a full comprehensive makeup without having some sort of brush touching your face. Mm -hmm. Although it's something that will say, ah, I use them like this, but you still need to an extent as a professional because not everybody will allow you to touch their face with your, your hands. Face, yes. So you need to have brushes. Okay. So if your brush is already 40,000 naira, how much is remaining for the other things? Wow. Well, you understand? Yeah. So you have, to, you have to know all those things. So I will say that. If you're learning from someone who will give you a kit, let's say, okay, they tell you, oh, for example, 100,000 naira, come and learn with starter kit. That starter kit may be a mini brush, say maybe 10 brushes, instead of a compressor with like 35, 40 mm -hmm. brushes, brushes, maybe 10 brushes, <laughs> maybe Sorry. an eyeshadow or a powder palette. Oh, okay. So it's, it's not going to give you a full face, but it's just something to encourage you to buy the other things that you will now use to start. So for a start, I would say that 150, 200 is not ridiculous. Okay, mm. that's, that's, um, that's fair. It's, it's fair. <laughs> All right. It's now fair. let's talk about um, making money out of it. Okay. You've been into it for quite some time now. How do you make money? Because look, people are watching all over the world right yes. now. So they want to know, we have our brushes, mm -hmm. we have everything we need. How do we make a living out of makeup? Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Yeah, it's I feel like um, making money out of makeup, you, okay, we finished makeup school now, what next? Yeah. You need to brand yourself. I remember when I was coming up with my brand name, I sat down in my parlor and I was like, what will I call myself? 
there's so many make up by this, make up by this, this, that, that. And I was just reasoning that, okay, my own personality, okay, I want to be something different. What do I want to do? Um, I want to do makeup for people. I want to be an ambassador for beauty. And I was like, oh, okay. Ambassador gorgeous. And then it was, I know in the beginning, people were like, what's that? I, I, yeah, I, 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 I hope you didn't just call it brand. Yeah. I hope you didn't just call it brand name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not really. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like a sentence. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, so, so. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay. So you have to kind of brand yourself. Mm. I would say that um, we're in an age where social media is king. You have done makeup school. Now I want to do photo shoots. Mm -hmm. I'm calling all my friends. I know my mom was my first moose. If you check my earliest pictures, my mom's face is all over the place. And my sister. Because there are people who sit down anytime she's going to work. I know okay, she lives home at seven, five o'clock. I'm like, mommy, come let me do your makeup to go to work. And then I know that she's a walking billboard for me. She's um, content for me on social media. Mm -hmm. So you find that one person, maybe your roommate, maybe your neighbor, somebody who has, um, who believes in you and wants to see you grow. Because at this point, let's say that we've used all our money to learn makeup. We can also start paying models. So now we're trying to see how we can do it on a budget. So you get people who can model for you. It doesn't have to be like a super expensive shoot. Get your phone. Most smartphones now have really good back cameras. Do the makeup. Get your phone. Take a picture in a well-lit environment. If you don't have a ring light, go outside. Natural light is the best, mm -hmm. honestly. So you raise up your curtain, open your windows, stand in front, take the picture, post it. So by the time you've shown now, you've chosen your makeup name, you've done your photo shoot. You go, you open an Instagram account, you open a Facebook you can open a Pinterest account, you can open a Twitter account. So all these things are what people look at. Because we've passed that stage of, oh, I'm just gonna stick my fly inside somebody's house. house because yes. how many houses can you possibly go to? Nobody but you don't on, have the time to read through. Exactly, yes. and then yeah, but you're on Instagram, you're, you're, you're reaching hundreds of thousands of people. people. And then I start putting up pictures and then you can promote the pictures. They've made it so easy right now. They've made life so easy. Before it used to be the era of influencers, you pay somebody an amount of money. But now even if you want to do a one dollar advert, one dollar is like three hundred and something now and I have five hundred now, I will do a one dollar advert and say, Okay. They'll show me, oh, this one dollar advert will be um, will be shown to ten people. At least I know that, oh, without my three hundred now, I've reached ten people who have seen my work. So based on your budget you can promote your posts. Okay. So now I've done my posts, I've invested in my makeup, I've packaged myself. You, I'm more all about spreading the word now. I'm trying to get all the clients I can. I'm putting my business out there in people's faces. Some people go to weddings and like, oh, okay, ah, I do makeup. You can visit my page. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. So there's never too much publicity. Okay. You can do business cards. You can still do flyers, but not as your prim primary source of, of putting um, yourself out of putting there. Yourself out there. Mm. I go to an event, I say, oh, I'm a makeup artist. like, oh, okay, nice. Oh, your makeup is so nice. Oh, I did it myself. Here's my card. Oh, okay, if you have an event, um, you can, I can give you 50%. You know that that 50%, maybe now they're doing you 5,000 naira. But you know that if you don't do that 50%, you will not do, you will do zero naira. Yeah, you exactly. understand? Like, yeah. you don't have any clients. So if it's that 50% that's going to lure that person in, you tell them, okay, you know what? Let me do it for you half the price because I know that this is for my portfolio. Okay. And if I'm making a little money, to get back into my makeup all well and good. People don't understand that initially you're not going to be making profit. Profit. Because they're just trying to, but if you can um, break even, the makeup you use, you can replace it, you're fine. At least for a few months, you're trying to get your footing. Mm. So um, for you to make money in makeup, people need to know about it, they need to know what you do, they need to trust you. So you need to have proper products that if you do my makeup today, I will call you tomorrow. Or if my friend says, oh, your makeup, yes, there was so nice that I will refer you. And should, because should I add that you need to be clean? Yes, yes. you need to be hygienic. Mm, yeah. Hygienic, yes. yes. Because um, I know that sometimes when I'm going for a client, I would have washed my hand in my house. But when I get there, I'll make the point and say, oh, hi, please, where's your bathroom? Mm. I want to wash my hands. They're like, oh. Okay. You understand? <laughs> Not because the hands are dirty, but just so that they can know that I'm doing a little extra. Okay. And then when I'm done, I still use my hand sanitizer and they're like, ah, ah. But just because your face is really sensitive. A lot of people have breakouts because a makeup artist is taking a dirty brush and putting it on their face. But you won't, most of the time, you will not even see what they're doing because everything is moving so fast, you don't really understand. I know someone who told me she washes her brushes once a month. I'm like, 
and your professional makeup artist once a once month. Once a month. I wash my brushes almost like every day. In between clients, I have isopropyl alcohol. It's a disinfectant. It cleans my brushes mm -hmm. and it disinfects it. But even when my whole day is over, my major brush, my powder brush, my foundation brush, I take all those and I wash it. Mm. So I have a lot, I can have like five powder brushes because I know that maybe when one is wet, the second one I will use it. Okay. So, so quickly, just before we wrap up, let's talk about um, challenges that makeup artists face, face because I know that in as much as we want to, people are so eager. I have the, I have the flair, I have that talent, you know, make it passion and all. The challenges that they will face. So quickly, let's talk about the uh, key Talents. challenges that makeup artists face. Okay, I think one one of the major challenges we face is down down pricing. Mm. You've um, set a premium on your business. I know how much I've, I've invested one million naira. Is it too much for me to ask for me to say, oh, I want to do your makeup twenty thousand naira? And then someone says, ah, but I know someone what that can do one thousand naira. Okay. It's not the same thing that you're doing. I think that's the first major challenge a lot of people because sadly, we're a lot there are a lot of makeup artists in Nigeria. Why a lot? But we have to also factor, um, think about the fact that there's a lot of people as well. You can't do everybody's face. So there's space for everybody. There's no competition. That's why when a makeup artist works to me, I'm not rude. I would answer your questions. I would talk to you because we can't possibly do everybody. Yes. So there's space for everybody to shine. Mm. You're not going to dim my own light. So people need to understand that. So the challenge is that when, when people um, downsize you, um, downprice you, I feel like it's because um, they don't see the value of your work. Okay. They don't appreciate you. That same person will go and pay somebody 100,000 to do the makeup that you'd have done at 20,000. So you need to be able to um, handle that. When someone down, um, down prices me, I'm like, okay. I may be upset, but I will never let it show. Professionally, you're not supposed to let all those things show. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I'm like, ah, after all what I've invested, it can be discouraging. So when, you, when somebody does something like that to you or say something like that, don't take it personally. Personal. Chances are the 1,000 person, when they go, maybe she's good and she just doesn't have money that she's doing 1,000 now. Okay. But maybe she's not. All right. You understand? So. I would love to even talk about makeup for men because <laughs> yes. it's not just yes. women, but we're yes. out of time. Yes, we have to wrap up. You can join us tomorrow for another exciting episode of Tea or Coffee.